Hey there, I'm Scott Winfield, and welcome to Victorian Opera's web series, Artists in Isolation. On this episode, we're delighted to be joined by beloved Australian cook, Maggie Beer. Maggie, thank you so, so much for joining us. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a delight for me, Scott. <laughs> and technology is such my cup of tea, not. <laughs> I think we're very brave doing this. Well, it, it's, it's wonderful in terms of uh, how technology has uh, let us embrace and connect with so many people throughout this pandemic. And you and your typical unstoppable spirit and sort of uh, incredible drive, almost inexhaustibly, created your wonderful series, Cooking with Maggie, at the start of this pandemic. Yes, well... You know, when we were locked down, I, first of all, I undertook it seven days a week. I can't believe I did that. And then that, after three weeks, I think, exhausted me so much. We went to five days and we did that for nine weeks. And it was just Chris, my amazing assistant and myself and no one else, no one for the prep or the wash up. And, <clears throat> and Chris was right on the other side because of, um, uh, COVID, of course. And, uh, and then as soon as we had been able to open up, we went to the farm and one a week now is quite enough. Well, it's been so lovely to connect with you in your kitchen and to, to have you deliver so many wonderful recipes to us. I, I, I watched your uh, lemon posset yesterday, which looks absolutely delicious. It's not a dessert that I knew. Oh, it's, it's very English dessert, I think. But it's, um, at the moment, citrus abound. So, you know, we've got lemons and blood oranges and uh, pink grapefruit and yuzu and almost everything. You could make it out of any of the citrus, but you do need that acid um, that, does the trick of setting it, the acid of the citrus, <clears throat> I should say. And uh, because really, when you think about it, Scott, mine weren't recipes very much. They were just, I, they were just, let's do what we've got. Um, let's, let's work with what we have. And sometimes they were so simple, it could almost be embarrassing, but I was happy with them like that. <laughs> You've been described as a joy mentor, uh, the joy mentor for the wonderful Melbourne cook, Nat Paul, who runs the local institution, Beatrix Bakes. Uh, I wonder, you are so joyful and radiant in your energy. How do you encourage others to develop joy within themselves? Well, it's all about loving what you do. It's all about loving what you do and surrounding yourself with the things that are important to you. And for me, it's it's living here in the Barossa and my family and my gardens and and um, the a, a community and and then when I think of food and what music does to me and the two things are so intertwined that. How could I not be joyful? I mean, I'm not joyful all the time. I'm a bit of a hard taskmaster. <laughs> I have a few people in the room who will agree with you. <laughs> and But I do have the energy and I, I have optimism and I inherited that from my, from my mum and I'm very glad I did. Was your great love of music something that you inherited from your dad? Oh, yes. Um, there was music in our household always growing up, and it was always the ABC, um, only classical music. My father and all his brothers had the most beautiful voices. My aunt, who died in her 30s, but she was a jazz singer. Oh, um, wow. One... Um, at Petersham Town Hall in Sydney when it was big bands. She would sing with the big bands. And uh, uh, and one one uncle who um, died just a few years ago at 94 used to ring his sister up in Melbourne. He was in Batemans Bay and he would sing to her and she would play the piano. And everywhere as a child I went, uh, we went as a family, Everyone would say to my dad, Ron, come and sing. And so I was just surrounded by it. And 
Gilbert and Sullivan and uh, Reedy River, you know, every, every part of what was happening was about music. Is that when you were introduced to opera as well? No, really, I wasn't introduced to opera till much later. Um, it was very much orchestral or voice and a bit sort of um, s- songs like Songs of the Averne rather than opera. Um, yes. and, uh, and beautiful melodic songs. Songs, m- m- voice was always really important, but so was orchestral. Uh, piano, the, the cello, the violin, not that they were within the family, but this love of it happened from there, from childhood. And when did you discover your great love for opera itself? I think it was probably only about 30 years ago. And when you consider, <laughs> when you consider I'm 75 and I had all that um, background of music in my life. It was really then, and you know, it was, um, it was, that's really when I, I, I found opera, whereas I'd always hear duets here and there and love them, but going to the opera. Uh, and I think the Pearl Fishers was probably the first one. Your Wonderful friends with a couple of opera singers. Eva Kong comes to mind and uh, indeed yes. does Jessica yeah. Pratt. For, Absolutely. For whom you created a signature dessert. Tell us about your friendship with Jessica. Well, it was all because of you. <laughs> you were the catalyst. You, via the beautiful Sarah Goodwin, came to me saying, would I, uh, would I make um, a dessert in honour of Jessica? Jess and I were in touch by email and then we had this one phone call when I said to her, well, you better just tell me what are your favourite um, flavours. And she said, uh, citrus and chocolate and raspberries and um, coffee. And I said, we're on, we're on. I immediately knew what I was going to do for her dessert. But then, of course, we had to come up with not only a dessert which I'm going to sort of put together today because I couldn't, I couldn't be here talking to you and not do it. And I'm so grateful. Thank you so much because I'm so excited to see you to see you prepare it and to have you cook for us live is a great. Treat I, I'm not well. cooking, Scott. I'm not cooking because I get in an awful mess because I've uh, already this is already done. But the whole concept. Ah, oh, that's right. There was more to this. When I had this conversation, I thought. Not only the flavours sang to me, but there was the issue that she was born in England, grew up in Australia, and her parents, in fact, live now very close to where my grandparents did, so I knew the whole area. And then she has had her amazing life in Italy. So that's why I had, I thought, okay, England, I'll do um, I'll do a deconstructed trifle. For Australia, okay, we'll use macadamias. Um, for Italy, we'll use, uh, we'll use bis- uh, uh, amaretti and I'll put vino cotto in them. Yes. So did you see how my mind worked? And then, and the rest just came together. Maggie, we in fact have a very special message for you from Jess, uh, from her garden in Florence. Let's take a look. Hello, sending you a big virtual (laughs) hug and uh, an update on all the seedlings that I was planting. Uh, These are coming along nicely, especially the melanzani. I don't know if you remembered how we talked about cooking the melanzani. Well, this one is going to be cooked up pretty soon. And these over here are my pride and joy. These are the pomodoro del pendolo that my husband teased me about when I started collecting the seeds from uh, back in uh, February, March, because he said that they can only grow in Vesuvio. I got them to grow on floor (laughs) and they're really yummy. (laughs) Sending you a big hug and lots and lots of love. Bye-bye. Oh, how lovely. How lovely. I mean, this passion for gardening is a new thing for Jess. Maggie, you've created this gorgeous dessert for Jessica that we would all love to try. Tell us, how do we make it? Oh, okay. That's right. That's what I was doing. Um, Okay. We have... Uh, oh, a chocolate and vino cotto meringue. Ah, that was the other yeah. thing that had to be Australian, you know. 
sort of a pavlova. <laughs> so we've got that and I tear that apart and then I'll put some lemon lemon curd. Oh, oh I'm Lick so jealous. Lick fingers because no one else is here. No one else is going to eat it. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, some amaretti that's got lemon in it as well and verjuice. Would you believe there's verjuice in it? Uh, <laughs> Then I'm going to, ooh, some ooh, double yum. cream. Oh, I think I put too much in. Never oh, mind. never too much, never too much. Um, more amaretti. Oh, I'll have to wipe my hands of the cream. I can't make cream. That's too much for me. Then and this is the I've raspberry got jelly. The raspberry jelly. And, of course, I don't refine anything. The raspberry jelly has got all the raspberries in it, not just... Um, uh, not just the juice, um, because I cannot bear wasting. So you just build this up. And so the lemon curd, let's put a few of the macadamias in. Um, the biscotti is to be in crumbs. Mm. Um, a bit more, a bit more of this. Now this is far too rich for one person, but I reckon you might try it. <laughs> If you were here, you would. Oh, I think I, I, I could quite easily eat it all um, and, and very happily as well. <laughs> <laughs> so there are all those beautiful flavours, but beautiful flavours um, because of Jess. Maggie, Jess, in fact, actually came to stay with you in the Barossa Valley and indeed sang with you and some of your friends from your choir. What was that experience like? Oh, could you imagine someone of Jessica Pratt's stature in the world, uh, in Italy, in the whole of Europe, says, can I come and sing with your choir? <laughs> My God, I nearly died of joy. Um, and as it happened, the choir was on holidays, but I had four of the girls come for dinner and um, Jess and her sister uh, came to stay um, and honestly, uh, she just let, let, let rip, of course. And we were all totally embarrassed to sing with her, but we did. <laughs> and it was just, you know, it was just an incredibly special moment. Quite apart from the fact that my, uh, piano room, as we call it, it sounds a bit toffy, doesn't it? But it's the room that has the piano in it. It has these very vaulted timber ceilings. So that's why, as a choir, we think we sound pretty good <laughs> because of the acoustics. But then just, oh, it was fabulous. But I've had Eva sing here too, and uh, the number of musical things that have happened to me are just extraordinary. As as a lover of music, not not a um, not a giver of music. Well, you, you were talking about your choir. Your choir is an incredibly special part of your life. Was that something that you missed during the period of self-isolation? Oh, yes. We, we certainly did because we weren't allowed. In fact, we're only now allowed to come back the last few weeks with 10 people because we are in South Australia, the, the lucky state. Um, uh, but I gather from tomorrow night you know, you're allowed 50 people. But, um, yes, we were without the choir for five months. Um, and that, and that was tough because Wednesday night, even when I'm exa exhausted or, or sad, the choir can just lift your spirits and give you something so, um, amazing in terms of energy that, uh, it's very hard to let go. You came into so many of our lives with the glorious ABC program, The Cook and the Chef, with Simon Bryant. Uh, for me, I know my, my family would come together every, every, you know, every week and that would be the one show that we all watched together and I think it united so many people across the country. How did that program change your life? Oh, my gosh, it took over my life for four years, um, but it was... It was the most amazing thing to do because working with Simon and the the things that we learned from each other, um, that was a real change. You know, to work with someone that you're so different from but can learn from uh, is fantastic. But then 
as we would go out and about, if we were traveling or doing something special like a, a, a picnic at the ABC, it was the children who were just so excited by what we were doing. We loved that so. That's what kept us going. I remember at the end of the first year, okay, we'll do another, but that'll be it. And then, and then we had this response from children and we kept going till the fourth year. And then I had to step away and say, Simon, I can't do any more. <laughs> I wanted to leave before it got too exhausting. It was too exhausting, but, um, you know, there's a tipping point. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, for, for context for people watching, you filmed for about 40 weeks of the year. Is that right? Yes, 40. Yes, 100. We did in the four years, we did 150 shows. And, uh, so it, it's pretty that's monumental. why there is so many, <laughs> so many repeats. <laughs> and yet I was still working. Uh, I mean, still working, still running a business. Simon was still, you know, doing another 50 hours, um, or, and more at the Hilton in those days. And so, how we put it into our lives, sometimes I have to remember that um, it just happened. Yeah. In a beautiful fusion of food and music, Simon and yourself performed with various symphony orchestras, the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra and the West Australian Symphony Orchestra, and cooked on stage whilst they performed. Tell us about those experiences. Well, these... These concerts that Simon and I did, the, we did two with the ASO and it was Guy Noble as conductor and you know Guy, he's so quick with the wit and but um, we were right in front of, we were right in the middle really behind Guy so the musicians were just really inches away that's how close. And so we were surrounded by this amazing music. And the music, of course, was tuned to um, uh, the decisions were made about the music to have drama and to have, you know, sort of waves of energy and drama happening. And so Simon and I played to it like you wouldn't believe, uh, like... Um, me chopping the head off a pheasant <laughs> and, and in front of everyone and plucking a pheasant and 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 I had this huge bowl that I made made a uh, like a risotto in that I had to stir and stir and stir and Simon made truffles where he threw chocolate all over and oh how fabulous I mean but it was that and then I fed I made sure I had food for the orchestra in in um interval and because they're always so hungry <laughs> and it was just a delight but the very the very best I mean yes is it the very best was <laughs> guy gave me his tails and <laughs> a whisk and I got to conduct the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra and the Wasso and another orchestra in Queensland um, of the encore of the Radetzky March. I mean, a whole, I think it's about three minutes and 12 seconds. But can I tell you, when you love music, yes. when you just uh, talk about something that you think you'll never have that chance in the world. Um, and in fact, I had a, <clears throat> I had another one with Guy last year at the Adelaide Town Hall. Um, uh, and, <laughs> equally fantastic. I think I, I'm not sure if I said it to you, but um, I've never met a musician who doesn't love food, a singer or a musician. And that gives us an immediate, you know, connection, don't you think? Oh, completely. And there's so many, you know, with opera specifically, there's so many composers who have such deep connections to food, be it Rossini or Verdi with his farm. Oh, yes. Oh, see, I want to, I really want to chase that, that world of Verdi and, and Rosini as well. Um, but you know, that where they came from and how connected to the land and yet this amazing, um, uh, this absolutely amazing genius for composition, but equally as interested as Verdi was in being a farmer and agriculturalist. 
you know, uh, oh, and then, you know, setting up the uh, old people's home yes, uh, absolutely. for opera singers uh, that still goes today. I mean, there's so many stories that link food and music. You're such a prolific person and seemingly inexhaustible in your energy and drive. Does music give you energy and does it reinvigorate you? Absolutely. I I think how lucky we are where music speaks to us so profoundly that it can pull us through almost anything. Yes. And um you know it it honestly um it it has that it has that ability to lift you and and help you to fly really um and i don't know what i would ever do without that love of music because it gives me it gives me succor yes does the barossa valley it's, itself give you similar sustenance oh <laughs> yes being part of a community and a community where music is really important as well and 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 um, the Barossa Music Festival uh, that um, Marg Lehman and Sharon Gregorian are, yes. are, are direct, well, Sharon directs, and to have Slava and Lenny and Sharon and all these, and Jose Carba, all these beautiful people that not only come to the Barossa and therefore come and eat. <laughs> Um, uh, the, the fact that there are music traditions in our high schools, our bands, our leader tafel choir, it's around us everywhere. Um, so the fact that I landed on this place has been, this place being the Barossa has yes. been the luck of my life. Yes. In 2003, you were given one of the many great and very well-deserved opportunities and, and honours that have been bestowed on you. And you were invited to cook at the Spring Blossom Festival in Japan for the Australian Embassy. What was that like and how did music and food converge there as well? Well, I mean, that was a fascinating thing. Chong Lu from Adelaide was there as well as myself. There were 700 um, people invited. So, you know, that 700 we'll come back to for another reason. And, I mean, um, I took... Um, uh, a, a very skilled young chef with me from from uh, here in the Barossa, thank heavens. Um, and uh, we honestly worked like dogs, I might say, for almost 24 hours in a basement of uh, the embassy. And then, and the weather was dark and terrible and there was no blossoms in sight. And then the morning of the storm stopped, the blossoms came out, and it was this beautiful day. But even so, I remember serving out everything that we had made, these beautiful virgin jellies and, mm. and goodness knows what else. And I just finished, and I'd been bending down and up and, and was really physically tired from this. And there was... The wind came in, the blossoms began to drop, and Slava Gregorian was there playing his amazing, amazing classical guitar and Jose Carba singing. And if ever, I will never forget that moment, it totally washed over me. Like this was, this was Nirvana, this was the gift I was given, this yes. um, beautiful beautiful timing and wonder <laughs> and we've been friends ever since <laughs> what do you like to do what do you like to prepare i imagine it changes so much based on the season but for when people gather around your table you know be it a handful of friends or you know something a little bit larger well i it will depend on the season right but it's not ever going to be fancy like um, an example, um, we love late lunches, sort of, well, late lunch, early dinners, Sundays at four or five o'clock. That's the perfect time to have family and friends around. And um, in fact, I had um, Slava and Sharon came to give us this beautiful concert 
and um, and I made this big, two, in fact, two big pots of goose cassoulet because it's winter. It was winter. Um, and that's exactly, and with a fantastic salad and then just cheese. And I'm not even sure if I did dessert. I don't often think dessert, uh, strangely enough, but if it were, um, just, um, an informal tea, it will be one of, um, Saskia's, um, chooks, which I will do with verjuice and garlic um corn and and um perhaps I'll stuff it to make it a little bit more special in other words I want to do something where people just sit down and love the food on the middle of the table and it's just sheer pleasure uh without it being ever a burden you know food is and cooking is to be enjoyed and making the most of whatever's in season and not fussing, not fussing. I'm going to ask one last question. Maggie, what's your greatest comfort food? <laughs> it's chicken soup with livers and giblets and hearts. <laughs> but Colin won't share it with me. He wants chicken soup without all those extras, but that's what mum always did for me it's what I did for my two girls and um but Colin is funny about awful <laughs> what would you make for him what would what would your what would if you were making something for Colin that would be a comfort food that you know may exclude awful <laughs> it would be Tudor Mornay and I've never made it for him ever so his sisters make it for him every now and then because I think it's a South Australian thing, um, this tuna mornay with pieces of corn in it as well. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not nice. It's his comfort food, not mine. Maggie, it has been such an utter joy to chat as always. Thank you so, so much for joining us and please stay safe. Thank you, Scott. And to you and everyone, particularly in Victoria and particularly all the musicians and artists, my gosh, we need to support them, don't we? We certainly do. Lots of love. Thank you. To you too. <laughs> For more chats with artists in isolation, you can follow Victorian Opera across social media or visit victorianopera.com.au. I'm Scott Winfield. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.